world class. That's two words that are usually used to describe Singapore Airlines. And for the most part, it does appear to be world leading. There are some shortcomings over the years, including some particular PR disasters that sadly bring its branding into question. Having experienced a rather unsatisfying flight on Singapore Airlines recently, I wanted to see if this flight would go better. Are they still world class? Let's find out. Welcome back to the channel and hello from Copenhagen. In today's review, I'm checking out Singapore Airlines again on the long haul route from Denmark to Singapore. If you're new to this channel, welcome. I'm Dex and this channel exists to provide useful and independent travel content, including flight reviews and travel vlogs. I started my journey at Copenhagen Kastrup Airport at 9 am in the morning. Checking in here was a breeze. Singapore Airlines has many check-in counters here which can be easily found with prominent banners. If you do decide to check in by yourself, there are self-check-in kiosks as well. Copenhagen Airport is nearly a century old and commenced operations in April 1925. This current terminal, Terminal 3, was opened in 1998 and can handle 17 million passengers annually. And here's the thing about Denmark, when they build airports, they do consider the user experience and ease of transit. I'm also liking the fact that there aren't many lines for security here. Of course, these days, there's a heavy emphasis on duty free shopping before we get anywhere near the gates. Not that I'm interested in buying anything. Once you've done the walk through duty free, there's enough to keep you occupied, from Lego stores to expensive cafes. I'm skipping my coffee and keeping the crowns in my pocket as I will go to a lounge today. The lounge I'm headed to is one of the better rated ones in this airport and it is after the passport control desk. If you have access to Priority Pass or Dragon Pass, this lounge is not to be missed. It is at gate C26 and it's actually pretty close to my departure gate. The Venter Lounge is actually quite a good lounge. With plenty of seating space and views of the tarmac, you'll be tempted to spend hours here relaxing. There's a decent selection of food here. Just don't expect five-star dining. A free flow of alcohol is available here at no extra cost. This also includes a wine fridge with a small selection of wines. As for aesthetics, I leave you to be the judge. Okay, it's time for boarding now at gate C33. Singapore Airlines operates five times weekly from Copenhagen and all flights operated on the Airbus A350-900. For me, this is the airline's best jet for long haul economy. I'll go through the cabin products and explain why I say that, but that's right after we board. Today was done orderly and by groups, which all passengers adhered to. 
As with past lives, important amenities such as headphones can be collected at the gate. So gone are the days where Singapore Airlines actually gave out free newspapers. Even in business class these days, you're only going to get a digital copy of a magazine. So there are approximately 187 economy class seats on this aircraft. As well as a good number of business class seats and 24 premium economy seats. You'll find this aircraft on many European routes, including those from London, Paris and Amsterdam. Seating is in a 9 abreast configuration or 3 seats per row. As you can see, these seats have pillows and blankets ready. These pillows are actually quite nice to touch. And they don't feel too hard on the skin as well. The headrest is adjustable in several directions and is pretty good. And there's plenty of leg room here. I got to say that the seats are quite wide. There's a literature pocket in front of you with brochures, safety card, and air sickness bag. And there are small pockets for other small items such as your mobile phones or headphones. Besides that, the seats also have another additional pocket, inbuilt cup holder, and USB charging port. There are also coat hooks on the side of each seat for you to hang your jackets. And of course, we have the in-flight entertainment system with a 13.3 inch touching display. This is actually very intuitive and easy to use. So you'll have a easy time scrolling through and choosing your movies or television shows to watch. There's a wide selection of games, movies, music. Comparable to other world-leading airlines like Qatar and United. In the panel above, we have reading lights, but there are no individual air nozzles. We mustn't forget about the distinctive bifold tray table of Singapore Airlines, which has an inbuilt vanity mirror. As far as I know, no other airline has this feature. If you do need to charge any devices, there's a universal power outlet that can be found between seats. All in all, this seat is probably one of the best economy class seats around, if not the best. In that sense, Singapore Airlines is world class in the hard economy product. As for the service, we'll have to get in the air first. Being that this is a snowy day, we'll have to get our aircraft the ice before we depart. And once that was done, we are on our way to depart to Singapore.
want to add on i decided to browse the chris shop catalog i didn't really find anything that i wanted but there's a catalog of course on every singapore airlines flight These days, Singapore Airlines provides free Wi-Fi. Yes, and it's all the Wi-Fi that you can use. But you will have to be a Chris Flyer member and input your Chris Flyer number before you check in. Check in. Connecting to the internet wasn't my priority then, so the in-flight entertainment system kept me entertained in the meantime. Cabin service commenced 30 minutes after departure and the good news is that the pre-meal snack service has returned. Singapore Airlines doesn't give out paper menus anymore but you can check out the details of your meal online. These days, the salad is returned along with the bun, crackers, water, and of course, cheese. So today's main meal, as you saw on the menu, is roasted chicken. I'd say that this is actually a pretty decent meal. After the meal, I decided to get some coffee, and this is where the cup holder comes in handy. For dessert, I had a very interesting Singapore Sling Ice which is actually pretty unique to the airline. It's pretty cool and it's actually made in Denmark. So unlike the actual cocktail, you're not gonna get drunk on this. It does taste quite close but there's no alcohol in it. So let's check out this bathroom which has really nice earthy tones to the design. Because we have amenities which are useful on a long flight like this, including toothbrush and litter bags. Snacks are also available in the galley. I decided to grab a beef sandwich and a Kit Kat bar, and I also had an apple juice to go along with it. Cabin service between meals, however, was infrequent, and you will have to request for any drinks from your. I also didn't seek the crew distribute bottles of water, so do take note. Anyway, I decided to use the Wi-Fi with flight. These days, Singapore Airlines doesn't have a data limit on the free Wi-Fi plan and you can use it to browse the internet. I'd say their speed is pretty decent. So this is not really a criticism of the airline, but I found this funny. I'm not sure why they have to send so many messages on the in-flight entertainment inbox system, but maybe there's room for improvement there. Before landing in Singapore, we received our breakfast. There were two options on board, asparagus egg souffle and stir-fried Asian noodles. So I opted for the Asian noodles. Oh yes, in case I forget, Singapore Airlines does offer metal cutlery on long haul routes, just so you know. All in all, this was a pretty good flight. The meals were good, and trust me, it's rare for these to taste this good on Singapore Airlines. Also, the in flight entertainment system was good, seat comfort was great and I enjoyed the free Wi-Fi. However, 
I'd still say that the weakest point for Singapore Airlines is its in-flight service. Through my observations of Singapore Airlines over the years, cabin attendants can be efficient, but also not really warm or friendly. On the flights when they are actually friendly, they somehow inefficient. That brings us back to the question, are they world class? The short answer is no. The cabin service remains inconsistent between flights, so I can't say that they meet the mark. But they are hard product. Seats, entertainment, Wi-Fi. These easily put many of their Asian competitors to shame. Their Airbus 350 remains their best jet and delivers great comfort, so take that into consideration when booking a Singapore Airlines flight. At the time of recording of this video, Singapore Airlines was about to reintroduce the hot towel service. So you should be finding this on the long haul flight of Singapore Airlines soon and I will look forward to reviewing this in future. For now, you can still be assured that this airline is still amongst the best in the world and still a great way to fly. For purposes of disclosure, I paid 42,000 miles for this flight and a couple of dollars in tax. Was it a good redemption? Yeah, I think so. Thanks for watching and if you really enjoyed my videos, please hit the subscribe button. It's a great way of showing your support for this channel as I grow it and introduce new sorts of content over the months and the years. Anyway, don't forget to reach out and tell me what you think of Singapore Airlines. Have you flown them recently? Are they world class? Just let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching again and see you in the next video.